Hello there. Uh, welcome to an explore of using the Emu MP7, the Emu Proteus 2000 and the Innovation Supernova and controlling them all with the Keystep Pro. This uh, little venture has been somewhat discussed and thought about and I thought I'd share the findings so far, how I've connected the equipment and give you an example of things playing together. Uh, so let's start with the, uh, the Keystep Pro and a piece of paper. So Keystep Pro I've got a uh, MIDI that goes out to the in of the command station and here we get to the first challenge that I had which was I tried to use the out of the command station to go then into the Proteus instead of using the MIDI through. So the MIDI through goes to the Proteus 2000 in and then the MIDI through goes to the MIDI end of the supernova. So that's the MIDI connections there. Beautiful drawing. So that's relatively simple. On the uh, Keystep Pro there are a couple of MIDI outs. I've used uh, MIDI out 1, although you could use 2, or you can set 2 to the MIDI 2, you can set to through MIDI through. Okay, so Emu Command Station in and through, and I've done that on uh, channel A, uh, on the through, and approaches in and through again using a novation in, only got one in, etc. Um, so, what does that look like? So here at the back we've got the Emu MP7 going uh, in from the key step out which goes in to the Proteus 2000 and then MIDI out sorry MIDI through not making the same mistake that I did using the out and the MIDI through goes down into the in of the uh, supernova. And now that you've seen that simple complex thing, uh, audio basically the, the command station, the Proteus and the Novation just go uh, into this mixer uh, and then into the iPad so I'll put the mixer and that then goes out to the iPad that I'm recording on. Et voila. So currently I have uh, tempos at 74. I thought I'd zoom in here on the Keystep Pro and show you the uh, settings I've got, uh, which are fairly standard. Uh, shift Utility goes into Settings, uh, Track Settings, MIDI Channel Out. So Track 1's Output 1. And as we go through each of the tracks, you'll just see that each one of the track settings is track matched to MIDI channel. So track 1 is MIDI channel 1, track 2 MIDI channel 2, track 3 MIDI channel 3 and tra track 4 MIDI channel 4. These ones here are for the, the project loaded to each track which has nothing to do with. So we get out of there. Uh, I don't think there's any other settings here that are changed. No. Nope. So I'll go to MIDI channels so here we go again, just checking these, track 1 output is on 1 and all the way through to 4. The output sync is 24 parts per quarter note which is standard. MIDI settings, uh, I've got knob acceleration uh, for the, zoom out a bit, for these control knobs is on uh, fast. So it moves quickly. 
that's just a preference of mine. Uh, transport, send and receive are off so that I don't get any extra MIDI signals being sent through to start the sequencer on the command station or whatever. The clock send is on. MIDI 2 out is still set to out. I haven't changed that. Controller setting, which is when you press control here, the global MIDI channel there, to 1. And each of the knobs has a CC number and I've just altered that number there to correspond with the command station number which I'll show you in a sec when we go through that if I remember. You may need to set those differently depends upon the uh, CC or control continuous controller numbers you have on your synth module. I think that was it. Uh, brightness. We can just drop that down maybe to low. There we go. That might make it a little bit better. So, there we have it on there. So now, uh, let's have a look at the command station. On the command station, uh, initially, need to set up uh, each of the tracks, uh, each of the 16, uh, they're actually channels, MIDI channels. So, um, channel 1A on the command station, I've set to kit, the uh, bass sustainer, pad soft, and hit dance. So, in fact, within the settings for MIDI, I have it on uh, multi mode. Let's go back here. Making sure that each MIDI channel is enabled. So, each channel uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, they must be enabled. This is also where you could switch the other channels off if you didn't need them or if you didn't want any cross uh, contamination if you've got another sequencer that's playing tracks on other uh, channels. MIDI merge in and out is on for A. External song stop, start stop accepted so that the um, key step can uh, start the song. Transmit MIDI clock on A and B out. Knobs transmit MIDI, keyboard outputs MIDI, and again if you turn that off then you're not going to be uh, able to play the command station in turn, it's like local off. Uh, Rechannelize is off, uh, keep constant tempo for chain patterns, uh, change bass tempo to external so that the key step pro can alter the bass tempo that keeps the ARPs etc in time. Off to global. I'd recommend once you've done all this you save it to a particular user setup so you don't have to keep doing this every time you reload up the command station. Uh, the mix output on the back of the command station you can use uh, one of the three pairs of outputs I'm using the preset one, which will use the main outs, uh, rather than using the sub outs. Uh, FX mode enabled, we'll, we'll, we'll bypass that at the moment, just so we don't get any other effects. Uh, Multimode control, preset on channel 1. Yeah, that's FX, so we should bypass, so we don't need to look at that, sorry. And that's it. And viewing angles, I've just changed viewing angle because it's easier to see when you're sort of right back here rather than being above it when you might want to change it. I think that's all those. Oh, uh, the programmable knobs. Right, so uh, that's referring to this uh, bank of 16 here. And you've got to let it know um, which ones you want to use for what channel and whether or not you want to just use it on the sequence internal or external I've got it both because I want it to affect uh, externally the other synths with MIDI messages in the same way that you can use the control knobs down on the key step um, and you can change this per 
uh, per knob so all the others are set to sequence but again that's personal preference you can do what you want if we could enable real-time controller yeah just on real-time controller these are the CC numbers for editing over MIDI controlling over MIDI which you might want to look at changing if you've got a specific task for them same with the foot controllers etc right so I think we're done there uh, let's have a look at the individual so here on this you'll notice the ARP is set to on the arpeggiator uh, apart from for three which is on a preset set but these are, are switched on so I can use them uh, there we go um, so if we go into uh, the preset editing uh, this needs changing so at the moment it's on key sync which means as soon as you press it it'll play it at that time which is great if you want to do syncopated stuff and offbeat stuff but uh, within the arpeggiator if you put that on to quantized it will hit on the beat so it matches with other so it, that saves it from uh, playing out of time with other arps another thing to consider is if you want the arp to play across the whole keyboard range or just on two or three keys or one key or a range latch you could have on or off depends upon if you want it to continue to play once you've latched it you can then latch and unlatch but that can get quite complicated if you forget that you've latched it and then you latch something else and so it goes on uh, keyboard throughs off recycle off everything else is off uh, no extension on the ARP gates it's 1% small uh, it's got a pattern in there and it's on mode as pattern current status off but because it's set to on here it overrides it if you will so that's the same kind of settings you can do for all the different channels you want to affect so let's go down now to the um, to the keystep pro give you I'll try and give you an overview sort of picture and see if I can just play something for the purposes of demonstrating may not necessarily be particularly musical um, with the uh, MP7 being slaved to the Keystep Pro all the settings I've talked about in the MP7 I've also done within the Proteus 2000 hopefully uh, so each of the channels the MIDI channels has a different um, instruments assigned and should sound according to that particular uh, channel so we'll just start off here we'll go to track one which is MIDI channel one um, and let's see if I bring up these uh, faders here got three instruments what plays so in theory I'll drop off and start and see if the supernova is playing yeah, so there's no volume on that and that's because I've actually set the uh, supernova only to respond to track 4 well, which is well, only to respond to MIDI channel 4 which I've assigned to track 4 so if I swap over there to track 4 you've got the supernova just on track 4 there's no sequence recorded in so we're not getting any noises yeah but if you put a noise in so that that will then continue to loop round just and do that so that's track four let's do it backwards then track three um, on the command station if I change to using the track channel button three that's pad soft so I'll bring that up on the command station but we've also got if I just take this 
so we can see what it is. Uh, a another noise here, which is on the Proteus 2000. So that's on the Proteus 2000. So I've got both those two sort of playing off in the, the background. On track two, I've got a bass sound on the command station and chords and hits on the Proteus. So. there um, because it's set to arpeggiator on the command station it is switched on in theory if I press play here on the key step pro it'll start sending the clock out and the command station should now pick that up so you've got that now playing on channel 2 of the command station so if we go back to track 3 there So in the background now you can hear there's an extra note So I'm going to hit enter and midi and that uh, is like a midi panic button for the command station um, so sometimes you get hung or stuck notes and it can also be due to, I think in this case, I've put the arpeggiator on uh, or forgotten to switch it off. So it's adding an extra note that's continuously playing or it could be an envelope that's really long release. But anyway, so we've got that going on. So now if we drop down to track 1, which again has been assigned MIDI channel 1, you can assign any MIDI channels to these. Um, as long as we're on a sequence and not drum, because drum's a different setting. Yep, that's a different setting. Yeah, so if you put it on to drum, it'll jump to channel 10, which is default for the drum. So whatever I have on channel 10 here, which is a hi-hat preset. If I go to... Yeah, because it'll only work on those keys, won't it? Because, see the green lights there, there's only a certain number of keys it works on. Very good. Yeah, anyway, so we don't want channel 10. I want channel 1. And the reason it's doing what it's doing is because I've got a kit assigned to that. And if I just go there, uh, the kit, uh, just trying to get to a kit, there we go. And I've got Audition on, which is why that's playing as it is. Um, so that's the setup. It, it seems to work okay uh, using a mixer you can obviously fade in and fade out you've also got your volume controls you can use um, if I go to 2 and put that on I need to change here to MIDI channel 2 the bass sustainer which is this noise and then I can alter as long as I make sure I've got that set to quick edit you can alter then as you would normally be able to do the filter or whatever. Yep. And then if we go back down to one. Stop it. That's it. Um, have a bit of a play, see if you enjoy it, and um, hope that was helpful. Oh, let me know in the comments um, what you think. 